Hi, this is Libby. And this is Roberta. And this is Art Blog Radio. Today we're speaking with Christine Fister and Rebecca Curlin. Christine owns and directs Pentimenti Gallery, and Rebecca, aka Becky, owns and directs Gallery Joe. Both galleries show cutting edge contemporary art that we admire, and both are celebrating their 20th anniversary of being in business. And as longtime observers of the Philadelphia art scene, we know they have things to say about how Philadelphia and its place in the national and international art world has changed for the arts over the years. So first of all, uh, let's get a little bit of history of each of the galleries. When did you open? Where did you open? And what was your first show? And we'll start with Becky. Well, I opened in August of 1993, during the recession of 93. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh, no. and I opened in a tiny little space um, in back of the space where we are today. It was about 350 square feet. Um, my first show was a show of my husband's work, Gail Curlin, and it was called Peoplescapes. It was sculpture. Interesting. And, yes, and I, I, the gallery opened in of September of 92, still also part of the recession. We had a small space on 3rd Street, and uh, our first exhibition was a solo show with Richard Cardona. And I have to say, at the time, I was not the person who opened the gallery. My husband opened the gallery. What's his name? Uh, Thomas Fister. And he arrived in the, in the U.S. Um, um, working for a, a company who was, um, the headquarter was in Philadelphia. And he decided after his six months stay in Philadelphia that uh, Gary would be a great idea. So where did you arrive from? Um, I'm, I'm from Switzerland. And your husband too? My husband too, yes. All right, how about you, Becky? Where are you from? You're not from Philadelphia originally, are you? No, no, I, I grew, I was born and raised in Columbus, Ohio. And then I moved to New York City and I lived there for many years and got married there. And then we, um, my husband and I decided to move out of the city. So we moved uh, eventually to Bucks, to Bucks County. And we lived in Bucks County for a few years thinking that we would like country life. And we didn't. <laughs> How far in the country were you? <laughs> it was enough of country. So we, we decided at that point to try a city again, and we, we decided to move into Philadelphia. So did you both think that, um, that the gallery business was going to bring in a lot of money? No. Mm, absolutely not, no. It was basically the love for the art. Um, and also the support to the artists that you would you would show that you show at the time that was the, the only goal um, they, they never teach you how to uh, Run a gallery or, or tell you what you should expect by running a gallery before you do it You really have to do it to uh, experiment when you learn it as you go along And how about you Becky? What were your motives? I was in between jobs at the time and uh, my husband was uh, was making art, and we didn't really understand the business at all. So I said, "Why, you know, why don't we just do this for a couple of years, and then we'll, you know, it'll be a way for us to engage with the community." Um, and that's part of the reason we selected Philadelphia rather than to try to go to New York because we knew in New York we would just be eaten alive there. And so Philadelphia seemed to be welcoming. It had a it had a little burgeoning community, and we thought, well, we can do this. And my rent was nothing, so we just uh, jumped in, and and the rest is history, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you own your building, Becky? No, I don't. And did you ever consider buying a building? I did. Um, at different points, we looked around to buy, and. Um, just nothing, you know, either things that we liked, we lost, we didn't get, or we didn't have the money. Um, I mean, there were some amazing opportunities when we were looking, but we just could, couldn't scrape up the money at the time and didn't know that we wanted to spend our life in real estate. So it, my landlord has been very generous. So it's a good situation for me there. 
That's great. How about you, Christine? Do you own this building? Um, we own just the unit, which is just a gallery space. Uh, we decided to do this because we were um, for about 12 years on Cherry and Third Street, and our rent would just every year would increase dramatically. And we decided that we would commit to, um, to a space. It's why we found this space here eight years ago. When you began, were you showing the same kind of work that you're showing now? Either one of you can jump in with that. I, I, I think for Pentimenti, the, the, the focus was not really quite focused from the get-go because the idea of the gallery was basically to have a gallery for three years and then to go back to Europe. So, I mean, we wanted to have this experience as we were here and uh, um, we wanted to experiment art, contemporary art, in all type of forms, materials. We didn't really have a real focus on what we wanted to do. We wanted to have the experience of working with a lot of different artists. So, I mean, as we grow um, into a more defined aesthetic, yes, we, we did it over time. We started showing sculpture gradually after a number of shows realized that it, just, it didn't sustain our interest, really. Um, and I began to be more interested in drawings. We showed drawings right from the beginning. We showed architectural drawings and drawings of sculptors. Also, in terms of sculpture, we didn't realize how much equipment you need and how much space you need and that you need to store it and that you, you know, and, and it falls on you and it <laughs> breaks. And, and it, it's very difficult. And it's not, and also we, we just didn't feel like there, we, we didn't have a fully, we didn't have a full grasp of what it meant to show sculpture. And, and so gradually I became more and more interested in drawings and um, I seemed to understand it much more than I understood draw, uh, sculpture. So <clears throat> tell us a little bit about why you decided to go to the art fairs because 20 years ago, there weren't that many art fairs the way there are now, I mm -hmm. believe. And now there's so many to select from. And at some point during your business ownership, you decided to plunge in and do the art fairs. So can you talk a little bit about that? Well, I went to the one here in <coughs> Philadelphia, the Path Affair. And it was, I think, the second or third year that they had done it. U.S. artists? The was U.S. artists. Mm -hmm. And that, um, and I remember right after I opened, dealers would, you know, a couple of dealers would say, are you going to do the art fairs? Are you going to do the art fairs? You should do the art fairs. And I thought, mm -hmm. what in the world is the art? So I did the U.S. artists, and that taught me how to do a fair. And then I got into Chicago, and that was a big deal. And, um, and So you got juried in? Is that mm -hmm. the way it works? Oh, yeah. You always get juried in to the fairs that Christine and I do. You have to be juried in. I started my, my fair, my first fair um, was Art Miami hmm. in January when it started and after that my second fair was um, Art Chicago and of course I also did also more or less at the same time you did the US artist. I mean the, as you grow you, you find out your program is stronger and stronger and you do work with a lot of local artists and you find out that the art fair it's an exciting places for them to be seen by additional people which are not always coming down to Philadelphia. It's far as the idea really to, to really bring the work of the artists in Philadelphia in other cities. So do the art fairs then solve for you the notorious Philadelphia collector problem? Let's state what the problem is. <laughs> as we have heard it from many, many artists who have complained about it, just that the collectors that are in Philadelphia run up to New York and buy art in New York instead of buying locally. And that seems, am I expressing that correctly? I, I think for my experiences, I, I, I don't think I could just say it is true or that's the format how the collectors in Philadelphia reach out, that they go to New York. Uh, I, I think maybe some people do and some don't. I mean, I have to say that we, we have wonderful uh, collectors locally and, and they are great support of the local gallery as well. I'd, I'd have to agree with that. <clears throat> I, in fact, it's been interesting the last few years I've seen more and more um, people in Philadelphia buying. Uh, more and more collectors are coming from Philadelphia coming into the gallery. Do you think and they're new collectors? Is this a um, new, you know? Some of them are new, some of them have been around a while. Um, I think collectors, 
uh, go where the art is. I mean, there's certain there certainly are advantages to buying in New York. You don't have to pay sales tax if you buy in New York and you have the work shipped to you. You know, that is becomes an issue. But it, it, it certainly isn't the motivating issue with collector. They go to where they want, where they love the art. So does the internet play any role in this cross-fertilization between cities? I think it, oh, absolutely, because people will see work on the internet and, you know, it, once you have an email address to somebody, you can do business with people all over the country because mm -hmm. they can see, inform, you know, your images online and then you can have a conversation with them. If they've seen the artist, um, the actual work of the artist, then they see it online. They know pretty much what they're going to get. If it's a new new artist for them, you can have a conversation with the collector and say, you know, this image is, you know, a little blue here. It's, not, you know, I would say it's it's made a huge difference. A huge. I can't even stress what a big difference it's made. Yeah, absolutely. In yeah. in our business. Yeah, because and I have, um, for example, I had a client in Kuwait. I have never met him. It's meaning we, we ship very large paintings to his home in Kuwait. Did he buy them without seeing them in the real world? Yes. He saw them online? I mean, he saw, he saw the work of the artist um, somewhere, which actually, um, I, to a friend who had purchased work. It's I mean, he had seen the work somewhere, but my physical connection to him was absolutely none. Um, you know, I, I mean, although there was something that happened this summer, I don't want to digress here, but um, I had um, uh, somebody want a piece of our work, and they they seemed very sincere. And then, and then about the third email, I, I told my assistant Emily, I said, something is wrong here with this. This is not this is not for real. We realized that it had, that was a scam. It wasn't just us, but they were scamming a lot of people. They set up an elaborate scheme about how they're going to get the work, and it's through a third party, and you've got to pay the third party, and then, um, and then of course you, the you never, you never yeah. see. I had this several times. Yeah. yeah, really. Yeah. Yeah. And is so there a clearinghouse for this kind of information? Like, is there a gallery dealer's gab site? You know where you. Share? No, I heard this experience from an artist who had this experience where he was asked to ship his work and a check was coming. The scenario is always you ship and we mail you a check, which actually is usually FedEx to you. But the time you ship and the time you cash your money with the check, there's always a few days and the check is uh, it's bad checks. I mean, you basically have shipped your work and you lost it. Often some point where you have to lay out money because they always pay more than the price mentioned. of the work. It's, they always give you a thousand dollars more on your check. That's right. That's then, exactly right. And That's then you exactly basically the way it was. ship the painting plus we put a thousand dollars back. Yes. Back. Because oh, they yes. say, oh, we've made a terrible mistake. We've overpaid you. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It's very yeah. suspicious. It's terrible. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they go after people that are desperate to make sales. Let's change the <clears throat> subject and talk about how you find artists to show. Everybody always wants to know how a gallerist selects their artists, and that's like the $64,000 question. <laughs> so <clears throat> I'm going to pick on you, Becky. I believe you just started working with Alex Paik, mm -hmm. yes. who's a young artist, and he's one of the founders of the alternative gallery, Tiger Strikes Asteroid. Yes. I think Alex came in and introduced himself to the gallery, to me at one time. And then um, Mia Rosenthal, who I show, um, showed her work there. So I became uh, acquainted with the collective. It was something that I was looking for at the time. I was looking for something that was a little different than what I had in the gallery, and um, and it fit the fit the bill. How about you, Christine? I mean, this is uh, also similar format. This is usually you, you have an artist you work with, so you, you know a good artist that you admire their work, which is maybe not exactly what you are showing at your gallery, but somebody you respect. It's, I mean, it's one venue where you actually uh, uh, pay attention. And for me, I have an open submission guidelines. I do this three times a year. I, I, I love to do that because for me, it gives me a good sense of 
who is here right now, um, people which I would maybe not encounter and I suddenly uh, get their information on my desk. Do you do studio visits in addition to everything? Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely, yes. Yeah. yes. And then when you decide to work with someone, do you have them sign a contract? I mean, mm -hmm. is there a paper they sign? No. No, I mean, for I know that some galleries do have it, and, and for me it's not because mm -hmm. I think my, my relationship with my artist um, is based on trust, and my idea is basically based on the idea of respect, integrity, and, and, um, and clarity. So, I mean, if I'm, I'm going to be willing to offer this to them, I'm expecting the same thing back. So, I mean, to me, it's, it's a relationship of people. I mean, it's all about trust and working together. We, we are one team. Well, thank you so much for speaking with us. We've yes. been talking with Becky Curlin of Gallery Joe and Christine Fister of Pentamenti Gallery. It's been great. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Art Blog Radio is brought to you by theartblog.org. Thanks to our sponsors, including the Knight Foundation. Also, we want to thank Peter Crimmins, who makes us sound good. He's our editor. And thanks to Eric Biondo for his music. You can download these podcasts at theartblog.org slash radio.